Morning, this is Wayne Malau with another Smart Profit Maximizing Moment, posting this on my personal page, and I'll move it over to the Smart Profit Maximizing page. For whatever reason, Facebook got me in a dungeon, won't let me record over there. I'm going to have to get their tech support, if I can ever get a human, to figure out what the hell's going on or what their problem is. Anyways, not a, not a big deal. We'll post this on my personal page and then move it to, the, to that page. I'll get it there one way or the other. Uh, today we're going to talk about increasing sales with a customer callback department. That's rather important, you know, to be honest about it. It's pretty simple. Customer callback department. Um, before I go there, let me introduce myself a little better. My name is Wayne Blyle. I'm a founder of a local CPA firm since 1991. I've been doing this a long time. I actually started when I was a sophomore in high school working at a small CPA firm. I've worked with small business owners. All through that, my career, except for six or seven years while I was at Comptroller and then a CFO at Magnolia Coca-Cola Bottling Company. So I've been on both sides of this um, as a client for C from C hiring CPAs to work with me and as the CPA being hired. Um, we specialize, we don't really specialize, we focus on three things. We're not allowed to say we specialize, <laughs> but every CPA does. So we, we really focus on three things. One, we focus on doing business tax returns, business and personal tax returns in a way that follows the law, limits exposure to IRS audits, and pays the lowest amount allowed by law, <laughs> which leads to the second thing. Second thing we do, we uh, do tax planning. In the last three years alone, we did $4.3 million worth of tax plans. Um, that, sorry, our tax plans have saved over $4.3 million for our clients. This is uh, $4.3 million worth of money that they could use to fund their retirement, pay their kids college, pay off loans, buy a new car, go on vacation, whatever. You know, reinvest it in their business. I hope they did some of that. Which leads to our third thing. We help our business owners make more money. Our job, and that's part of the reason for these videos that, like I said, if you're not, I don't normally post them to my personal page, so this is unusual. Uh, go to Smart, look, at, look me up at Smart Profit Maximizer. Um, yeah, I have my own business page. You can, I think you can find it if you go here. If not, go there and like it so you can find these. I do them pretty much every day, Monday through Friday, have since January. There's well over 80 posts there right now, if not more. I don't count them. Um, let's talk about increasing sales to, with a customer callback department. My argument is every, cust every business should have a customer callback pr process that they use after every sale. If your number of sales is ridiculously too large, then what you need probably is a sampling. And definitely have a cutoff. Anybody over a certain amount, um, you're going to call. Anybody, and then maybe every 10th, 50th, 100th customer, um, just to call them and see what's going on. All right. A customer callback department could be used for a few things. One, follow up with all customers to receive feedback about your customer service. This is great. Find out what worked, what didn't, especially the larger you are and the further you're removed from the field. All right. If you're it, you don't need this as bad. Answer any questions the customer may have about using your product. The big this helps to try to stop returns because they just it's not doing what they thought it would do. Um, it may be it doesn't do what they thought they would do and your sales department or you didn't do a good job making sure it matched to the, their needs. In which case, solve the problem, you know, figure it out. Even if you have to give their money back and take it back, you're better off with a happy person than somebody who's mad, especially in the world of social, social media where they can post it everywhere. Number three, explore opportunities for selling additional products to current customers. This is important. I'm going to go through an example in a minute of where we set this up for a client of mine and how it really worked well. Ask for referrals. If they're happy, you know, even if they're not happy, if you're going to solve their problem. When you're done, it's like, well, this didn't really work for you. I apologize for that. We'll make it right. Uh, do you know anybody who, now that you've used the product and you know what it really does or the service, do you know somebody who it would help? And, and never forget to say thank you. To the customer. That's the last thing your follow-up department should do. They had a lot of choices, including not doing anything, but they purchased from you. All right. A thank you is not much to say. All right. It's the least you should say. Employees who make these calls should be well-trained, have good telephone personalities, and have to be mo motivated to ensure the customer receives legendary service. You got to pick the right person. You got to motivate them correctly, and then you got to follow up. You should have a telephone script for them to follow along with guidance on how to handle different situations. Maybe you record a few, do some trainings, whatever. 
Finally, a follow-up system for complaints should be established. That's important. If they receive complaints, they need to set up a system. Because worse than a client having or a customer having a bad experience is them complaining and you just ignoring it. Oh, okay, yeah, we'll take care of that. And they never hear another word. You know, Facebook, <laughs> Apple. <laughs> the owner of a portrait studio I consulted with used customer follow-ups to massively increase sales from their current customers. This is a system I helped put together for them. Look, the cost of portraits runs hundreds of dollars. And we're not talking about just simple, you know, pictures that you go someplace and get. We're talking about the portraits you get for special events. Um, nowadays, not many people are doing it as often as they used to. But it still happens on a special event. You want professional quality, something that'll last forever. Weddings, anniversaries, births, graduations, special events like that. And Owen did a good job of selling the packages at the time, okay? And that increased the average sales amount and always tried to sell framing of the portraits. But the customers often turned it down because they already hit their budget just getting the portraits, just getting the pictures, all right? So we created a system. A week after the sale, here's a three-step process that we did. A week after the sale, he or his staff called the customer, make sure they were happy with the order, and asked if they needed any additional prints. All right. Uh, customers often discovered that they did not have enough copies to hand out to all the friends and people they had. So he often made some sales here, but he also got people to understand he was interested in making sure that they were satisfied because this was not a low-cost option, that he was a higher-end. So it was important, especially if you're selling a higher end product, to make sure that you that your customer's happy. A month after the sale, this was step two, he would call it again and thank them for their purchase again. He would ask them if they'd gotten a chance to frame the wonderful portraits they had purchased. Most customers usually hadn't gotten around to it, so he would say, and this is the wording that we put together, it's a shame you're not displaying the portraits that are so important for you. He had many sales this way because some time had elapsed since the purchase of the portraits and the customers did start to feel they had wasted money on portraits no one could see and enjoy. All right. He would then ask for referrals using the method we outlined in the article titled The Correct Way to Ask for Referrals. So he asked for referrals by saying, not just saying, hey, you know anybody else who needs portraits? He asked, do you know anybody else who's getting married? Do you know anybody else who's had a graduation? Do you know anybody else who's just had a baby? Do you know anybody else... You know, those were the three big ones, but he had a list of four, five, six items. But what we're doing is we're triggering. I don't know anybody who wants portraits. Oh, but, you know, my niece is getting married. Uh, my sister's having a baby. You know, we're, my parents are heading to their 50th anniversary. Yeah, I, I know those, okay? So when you're asking for referrals, make sure you're asking correctly. The final step we did really worked well. Uh, all of these steps worked pretty well. Six months after, it really worked really well. Six months after the sale, he would call the customer with another sales pitch. He'd say, I'm going to be destroying the prints you didn't buy soon. I mean, I'm going to soon be destroying the prints you didn't buy. And I thought you might be interested in buying them at 50% off. It was amazing how many he sold. People just didn't, you're going to destroy pictures of my mom, my baby, uh, our wedding? And you're going to give them to me at 50% off. A lot of them sold that way. And then he offered to frame the additional portraits using some discontinued frames that he was willing to let them have at a huge dis deep discount. He was going to throw them away or give them away anyways. So he basically gave them a cost just to get his money back so he could get the frames that we're selling now. And finally, um, he asked them again for referrals and thanked them again for the order. The structured follow-up system led to an increase in sales of 50%. Now think about that. He had a 50% increase in sales and not $1 spent on advertising. And he did finally have to break down and hire another employee because he saw how good it worked. He expanded it to call everybody. All right, so he had a dedicated employee that did nothing but call back. And they're a sales function. They're a sales function of making sure that it really worked. Hey, this is Wayne Blyle saying until next time, let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.